Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this traditional style cottage wall shelf. It has a grooved back panel and this shaped bottom part here and shaped side pieces. It's a fairly easy project and one I hope that you'll enjoy. And this technique of shaping wood here is really handy for other projects. And the wood I've used is one of my favourites, a beche. And it's just a soft um, craft wood. This is the 1.5mm thickness or 1 16th of an inch. And for the top um, of the shelf we use a 2.5mm or 3 30 seconds of an inch. So you just need the two thicknesses of wood for this project. You could use uh, basswood, lime wood. Uh, gelatin, which is a really nice quality wood with an even closer grain. And then you'll need um, a steel rule, which obviously for measuring, cutting the wood. And we also use it when we come to do the grooves in the back panel, along with a flathead screwdriver. I also use um, a scribe, or just a tool with a sharp pointed end. That's for creating the shapes in the wood. A nice sharp pencil for obviously marking our wood. And the craft knife I use is this Swan Morton, which takes a 10A blade and that easily cuts through um, wood up to the thickness of 3mm or 1 8th of an inch. Always put a new blade in at the start of a project. Masking tape and clamps um, for holding the wood together while the glue's drying. The glue, again my favourite, Gorilla Wood glue. It bonds really quickly so you don't have to hang around waiting for the glue to dry too much. Um, cocktail sticks for applying the glue and removing excess glue from along the joins. And I just dispense the glue onto a piece of card which makes it easier to apply. I've used a dark oak varnish for my shelf just to keep it in that traditional style. But you could use any colour varnish. Um, you could leave the wood natural and just finish it with a um, clear wax. Or you can paint it. A scrap of paper um, which we use to make a template for the bottom moulding. And any old scrap of paper or thin card. And then a couple of grades of sandpaper. So this is 120 which is a harsher grade um, for sanding the edges of the wood. And then something a bit softer for um, preparing for varnish. And I like to use a 500 grade for that, which I cut into small pieces just to make it easier to, to handle. I think that's everything. The cutting list is coming next. And then we'll get started. We're going to begin by scoring grooves into the back panel. Now in the cutting list I advise to cut this so that the shortest edge of the wood is in the direction of the grain and that's so that we can score grooves um, along the grain. You can't score grooves in the opposite direction so that's just why I advised you to do that. So take the ruler and we're going to make pencil marks um, along the top and bottom edges at 10 millimetre intervals. Um, in inches, I think that's about 7 sixteenths of an inch, or just evenly, um, if that helps. Now this is 69 millimetres across, so this final groove will just be a millimetre narrower, but once the shelf is built, that won't be noticeable. So just make a small faint pencil mark all the way along, and the same along the bottom edge. And then turn the piece and place the rule so it's just below the pencil mark and that will just allow for the thickness of the screwdriver. And I'm using a flathead screwdriver. This is the smallest in the set. And we're just going to use that very corner of the end there to score the grooves. So just start with a light score, and that helps keep it on track, and then just do a couple of heavier scores, and that creates a nice groove in the wood. 
then just move the ruler along to the next set of pencil marks and just below again and again a light score and then two slightly deeper and go all the way along when you get to the bottom you might just want to turn it otherwise the ruler will rock off the end there and here's one that I did earlier Got a nice grooved back panel and then just take a small piece of sandpaper fold it up and then you can just work that along each groove just to smooth the edges give a neater finish so that piece is done now we're going to shape um, the back moulding so it's this piece of wood the 69 by 10 millimetres so cut a piece of card or paper the same size as the piece of wood fold it in half and we're just beginning by making a template for our pattern and then we want to draw um, some curves on there so I'm doing it upside down but I just wanted to start in the middle so I'm just going to do some small curves along there I don't want to go too high up like that and then just blending into that end there So just a simple sort of pattern along the bottom there and then cut that out to make that middle curve a little bit bigger like that so open out the template and that can then be traced onto the piece of wood so just lay that on there like that and then I want to score that pattern further into the wood um, with a scribe and that's just a pointed end tool and this is actually out of an old electrical kit um, for punching holes through copper tape but it, it works ideal for this and just use it as a pencil and just go over that line just lightly at first and I find it's easier to do this than just sort of working on it with the knife to start with this just makes it easier to cut out so just scoring in quite lightly and I'm just going to go back over it just to make sure that that's the whole of that pattern is in the wood like that and then I'm going to switch to the craft knife and just be really really careful when you're doing this just always be aware of where you're fingers are in relation to the blade of the knife and just again scoring into the wood not with the intent to cut through just yet you're just making that pattern deeper I can't stress enough how careful to be here with your fingers and it might be a good idea as well just to practice this technique on um, some spare scraps of wood it is quite tricky to get the hang of but it's a really good technique to know because it can be added to so many pieces of furniture just to create a really nice detail so I'm just going through lightly at first And don't be tempted to pull the wood away either you, you need to have cut completely through before you remove it all the wood will just split and I'm going in slightly deeper and there, that's the first piece out of the way I'm 
pieces are more stubborn than others. You can turn the wood as well and just work on it whichever direction makes it easier to get to. And don't worry about any little bits that you've got sort of sticking out because we're going to sand it afterwards to really tidy it up. So that's the sort of basic pattern. You can see that's not very neat at the moment. So we can now use a fine grade um, sandpaper. And if you've seen my other tutorials, you know I like these little pieces because they're just easier to handle. And wrap that around the end of a pencil. And then you could just work it in each of those grooves. off those edges. And just keep sanding until you've got a nice edge along that bottom. I'm just going very gently so as not to take away from the shape. And then take the back panel, and I've just dispensed some glue here onto a piece of card. I'm going to glue these two together. I just apply glue along the one long edge. And place them on your worktop and just press them together making sure that the outer edges are straight. Just get another cocktail stick to clean away this glue. And then I'm just going to secure that with a little bit of masking tape just to hold it together whilst the glue is drying. On the back as well. And whilst that is drying we can prepare our side pieces. And we're just going to do a similar technique as we did for the mouldings. Just start with one. So make a pencil mark um, six millimetres along the bottom from this edge. It doesn't matter which edge. And then turn it onto the side and do a pencil mark six millimetres or a quarter of an inch. Like that. And then you just want to draw a curve between those two pencil marks. Like that. And then take the scribe and again we're just scoring that into the wood. Much simpler shape this time, so a lot easier. And then continue with the craft knife. being really careful of your fingers. And just keep working through until you're completely through the wood. Nearly there. So we've just created a curve at the front of the shelf 
and we're going to use the sandpaper again around the pencil just to tidy that up. And then you can also just curve over these outer edges to take away that harshness. So do that on the other piece as well and then we can begin fixing the unit together. We're now going to start constructing the actual shelf. Um, before we do that we're going to make some lines across the back piece and the two side pieces um, to help with the shelf placement. So rather than making sort of three individual marks I'm just going to use some tiny pieces of masking tape just to join these together. Piece there. We want to go sort of across the middle so we put a piece a bit lower down. Make sure the pieces are lined up before you tape them. You can do it separately but I just find that this is quicker you're just doing one mark then rather than doing all three pieces. So turn onto the side and then make a pencil mark 26 millimeters or one inch from this long top edge. So just a small pencil mark there, 26 millimeters, and then over the other side as well. And then we're going to join those up just with a faint pencil line, like that. And then these marks you've done at the end, just follow that onto that front edge of that piece of wood and that will just help us keep the shelf straight when we put it in. And then our second shelf we're going to put right across this join to hide that join. So just place the ruler just below it. Actually I'm going to turn it round so the ruler doesn't rock so you want to place the ruler just above it. <laughs> and then draw a pencil line all the way across. And then again just follow that onto the front edges of those side pieces. And then we can remove our masking tape. And now we've got three pieces ready to attach. So we'll start by applying glue along this long edge of the back panel. And then we're going to attach this first side piece. So ensure that the pencil lines are lined up and that this top edge is flush. And just press those together. Just to give time for the glue to begin to take. And always have a clean cocktail stick handy to remove the excess glue. Like that. And then we've got a top piece and two shelf pieces that are all the same size. So take one of those and apply glue along one short edge one long edge. And then we're going to attach that right along the top so that it's on the inside edge of these pieces and so that it's completely flush with the top edge. And then as you do that, that will square up this side piece. So just have a look around the other side and make sure that everything is flush. that into place. Okay, we'll get rid of that excess glue and it's lifting at this end but don't worry for now because when we put the other side on that'll all push back together. Just press it down, make sure it hasn't come out of alignment. And then we're going to start with the first shelf, central shelf. Again, apply the glue along one short edge, one long edge. And then we want this piece so it sits just above that pencil line we've made. 
but so that you're just hiding that pencil line below it. And you're using this line here as well that we made on the front edge to make sure that that's straight. glue and then this final shell which we're using to cover up the bottom join the pencil mark there on the front edge of the shelf just to make sure it's staying in the right place make sure you remove the glue from the other side as well And now we can attach a final side piece. So apply glue along these outside edges. Oops, I've moved the top piece there, but I'll straighten that in a moment. I don't think that top piece wants to be there. Lay it back down on your worktop and then just making sure that the bottom and top edges are aligned. Put it into position at the same time just making sure the shelves are still sitting just above those pencil lines on the front edge. And then I'm going to push this top piece back into position. Just very carefully press all of that together always checking that the shelves are staying where they should making sure you're doing that before the glue has time to really dry and then I'm just going to secure that side piece with some masking tape straight over it like that and pull quite tight making sure that top staying in position there and I'm just going to put a little bit over that back edge as well all completely held together and then that can be left to dry so finally we're going to fit the shelf top and we're going to start by beveling one long edge and both short edges so hold the piece against a sheet of sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you not applying too much pressure just keep checking that you can see that's just starting to bevel over but I want it to look a bit sharper than that so keep going Oops. 
and then just keep having a look until you're happy with the shape and that's quite a nice pointed edge there now and then just do the same again on the sides and again you don't want to apply too much pressure a coarse grain sandpaper here. It's about 120 grade. There. It's got two matching edges and a nice pointed front. I'm just going to do that one more time. And then you can go across. And that just gives you a nice smooth finish. And then we're going to attach this to the top. So apply glue to the top of the shelf. And then lay it down on your worktop and you want it beveled side towards the shelf and the back will be level with the back of the shelf and then you want the even overhang at either edge so press that into place and make sure the back's flat and then you can just clean away the excess glue going to apply a bit of masking tape across the top like that and then I just like to use clamps as well just to hold that into place and then you don't get that gap along the top edge and the beveled edge. And once again, that can be left to dry. So once you've removed the clamps and the tape, use a fine grade uh, sandpaper over the entire piece to prepare it for paint or varnish. And if you are varnishing, it doesn't take as well um, over glue. So just pay particular attention along any joins. And just sand away any glue residue. Along the edges of shelves, you can sort of go along underneath and then over the top as well. And that just creates a slightly curved edge at the front rather than a sort of sharp, um, straight edge. I've actually already done this piece. And when you're sanding, either wear a, a mask or make sure you've got plenty of ventilation in the room. And then I like to go over it with a soft, um, clean brush and just remove all of the dust. And that way you're not painting or varnishing in the dust. I don't know if you can see all that coming off there. Lots does come off when you brush it. And then you're ready to start varnishing and I always apply a couple of coats leave it to dry and then you can just give it a really light sand um, in between coats and that gives a really lovely finish and here is the completed shelf I hope you've enjoyed this project. If so, please do subscribe to the channel as there's lots more tutorials to come. And thank you for watching.